Hello, I'm Jason, and I design stuff, and sometimes things, to 3D print. I also like uh, long hikes in the woods, but uh, that's beside the point. So the other day, I was taking a long hike alone in the woods, and uh, I heard something weird. Yeah, I wasn't sure what that was. So I kept walking, but then I heard it again. When I came to, I was alone and it was dark. So I hurried home and started sketching what I'd just seen. Well, obviously none of that is real, but I thought it'd be really fun to mix a panda with a deer or an elk. Give them, give them big antlers, kind of make them stand upright like a Bigfoot or something. Make him live in a forest where he's getting moss and green stuff on him all the time. And uh, yeah, so it's just a fun little creature I wanted to turn into a model that we could 3D print. So let's hop into Blender here. And here's kind of a time lapse of the whole design process, blocking it all out and painting in all the colors after we print it. Whenever I make a new character, I start with the block out. I have my reference drawing in the background and I'm taking cubes using a subdivision surface modifier and just making the general shape of this panda deer. Working in 3D is like having access to infinite clay, clay that defies gravity, but Still, it's really unique because you don't have to worry about how much clay you have on hand or anything like that, and you can just keep adding any shape that you feel you need to block out your character. This guy is a hairy dude, so I wanted to give him lots of little strands or locks of, of hair all over him. We're gonna sculpt in a lot of it, but to really define the detail here, I'm using these uh, paths. Um, with hair on it and pulling out little bits on the ears and he's got green shoulders now I don't know maybe that's leaves that he's collected maybe it's just his hairy shoulders have collected moss and and turned green after all these years wandering around in the forest he gets damp and musky and all that that uh, greenery just sticks to him for the eyes I'm just using spheres and overlapping them we got the white of the eye then we got kind of the pupil iris combination here and then he's got a little catch light in his eyes that just kind of creates a little raised divot that makes it easier to paint. Right now he's looking too smooth so it's time to add some more details. So we're going to use this alpha sculpting brush going to refine his beard, hairs that are coming down and uh, a lot of this is just the standard brushes that are in Blender but the fur that is being added here is a custom brush that was made to make adding the fur a little easier. It's got lots of different little pieces that wiggle back and forth and I can just, um, just kind of stamp that on wherever I need fur. He's turning into quite a hairy boy. His claws definitely need some work, so here I'm just adding a little extra detail around, kind of blending it into his little finger nubs there that have the sharp claws on the end. I like to work in color when I'm 3D modeling. It doesn't need to be in color, but it just helps me see what the final result could look like. Now it's time to see if I can pose this guy in a way that will print support free because I don't like using slicer supports if I don't have to. It's gonna take a little bit of work to get this guy positioned in a way that won't require those supports though. So right now I have all of his little body parts posed uh, in a way that kind of everything slopes upward at some sort of angle. And I parent all the different body parts to each other so that I can use them almost like a skeleton instead of having to create a, se a separate armature, which I, you could do, but um, for this case, it just didn't make sense. 
I'm also working on a base that he can stand on. Some sort of natural looking base, adding some rocks, adding a tree that he can grab on that will help him print support free. Um, these rocks are just sculpted using a, a bisect tool in the edit mode of Blender, which allows you to just cut off various edges of a cube or something like that to start with. And now I'm just positioning all his toes and fingers and everything to wrap around the various uh, terrain components so that uh, he can print without those slicer supports. This tree element acts as a support but it's built in so we don't have to try to remove it later on. It will hold up his, his left arm as it prints there so his fingers don't print in midair. Now it's time to print. I'm just using Elegoo PLA. I've been in, enjoying this filament recently. And so I'm gonna print it in one color because I'm planning to paint the model. I love that this printer has a built-in time-lapse camera. It makes things so easy and so satisfying. I also printed a custom base to make it really fancy. Time to burn it. No, really, I'm burning the strings off of the antlers from the filament. Don't play with fire, it's dangerous. Time to set up a spray booth using some filament bags and my fanciest cardboard cracker box. I'm priming this guy with black and then I'm using white angled down to act like sunlight. It's called a Zenithal Highlight. Let's clean up real quick. Now it's time for some color. I'm going to add some brown on the stuff that is going to be brown. Arm brown, back brown, chest brown, upside down brown, and nose brown. I think you get the point. Now it's time for some tan color on the antlers and also I'm going to paint the tree trunk that he's holding tan as well. Next up is a lovely shamrock green on the things that are going to be green like his shoulders and the grass that is on the base. The liquidy blue stuff is getting a coat of liquidy blue stuff. Time for a mani petty with some lovely leathery brown. His dirty gray fur is going to become a little less dirty and gray with some dry brushing of white paint. Time for a wash to make the tan bits a little less tan and a little bit more brown. Steady, steady, steady. Wait till you see the whites of his eyes. Time to highlight that white fur with even more white because it's looking a little bit too gray right now. Yes, I'm still highlighting, okay? It takes a lot of time. Now I'm going to wash that liquidy blue stuff with some different liquidy blue stuff. The green on the panda's shoulders wasn't looking quite green enough for me, so I added some more green. I 
I may have poured out a little bit too much of that leathery brown I used on the antlers and the tree. So instead of letting it go to waste, I used it to fill in all the places I missed on the base around the green grass. Just look at those pearly whites. Steady, steady, steady. And you guessed it, time for some more brown. A lighter brown this time, more like that tan color. Boop. Boop. Boop, boop, boop. Sorry I had to poke him in the eye. Finally a different color, yellow. Time to paint the already gray rocks more gray so that they look a little bit more gray. Look mom, I'm dabbing. Gotta make that water look foamy. I may have borrowed some glossy nail polish to make the glossy things look glossy. Sorry little dude, I'm almost done poking you in the eye. Did I mention it just snowed in the forest? That's partially why panda deer is kinda mad. Hey look, we're gonna paint something else brown. I don't know why they call this a wash. Maybe we should call it a dirty instead. Ooh, another new color. Gotta make the corners look shiny. I was tired of watching paint dry. Let me just block this shot of adding rust to make it more suspenseful. We're just about through. It's almost time for some detail shots. Hey everybody, I hope you liked the video. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to pick up this model and 3D print it yourself, paint it or print it in a multi-part 3MF file, you can do so on our website, zykit.com. I'll put a link down in the description. If you want to see more of this content, please consider subscribing and liking the video and leave us a comment about what else we should make next time. Bye.